I don't know if you know this, but Sharknado 3 is in production right now. Sharknado, of course, was the surprise hit um, from the Sci-Fi Network uh, about sharks inside a tornado attacking Los Angeles, which is um, wish fulfillment for many parts of the country. Uh, it was an unexpected success, mostly because of the title. Uh, by the way, they've been doing this for a while, these word uh uh, portmanteaus or whatever they're called, these combinations of words, Sharknado. I think they had one called Mansquito. That was uh, one of my favorites. But Sharknado 3, the premise of Sharknado 3 is bittersweet for a progressive. Here's why. Uh, the premise is that Mark Cuban, the billionaire, is president. Ann Coulter is vice president. Uh, the production also stars uh, Michelle Bachman and Colin Powell. Now, I would say this about the program. First of all, uh, I'd love to never see those people again. I suspect that many of you feel the same way. However, on the other hand, one can only assume that part of the program involves seeing Mark Cuban and Coulter and Michelle Bachman eaten by sharks. So it is not all negative, uh, should that be the case. Uh, it's also interesting, by the way, to note that the Sharknado, Sharknado 3 production unit has been shut down by a labor strike, so it shouldn't surprise us that perhaps their labor practices are not what we would wish them to be. Now, as for Colin Powell, now I, I have to say, uh, he seems like a nice man, but uh, I do not forgive him. Uh, I, I would put it this way, and this will sound harsh to you, but I would say that um, his performance in Sharknado 3 will be his sex, second fictional role before the American people. The first role in a work of fiction was when he went before the United Nations and told the American people and the people of the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Now, he insists that he didn't know he was lying, that he was lied to, I'm sorry. If you're the Secretary of State of the United States, if you are a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, it's your business to know. And if many of us who are merely observers could see the inconsistencies and flaws and holes in the story which uh, Colin Powell uh, told, a story which was a critical step on the road to war, then he should have known as well. So I am not prepared to forgive Colin Powell, however nice a person he may uh, seem to be. On the other hand, I will say I'm not prepared to he see him eaten by sharks either, So, uh, because he does seem like a nice man. Okay, now, a last observation I'd like to make for you guys is this. Um, well, you know, that whole dress thing, remember a couple of weeks ago when everyone was saying, does it look white and gold or blue and black or whatever it was? Uh, I felt very lonely because I looked blue and brown to me. And um, I, I was really curious about that. I finally met one other person, a TV producer, who also saw it as blue and brown. It turns out it was blue and brown. So uh, I see that I found out that 25% of human beings have a fourth cone of the rods and cones in your eyes and see colors as they are. Somebody wrote this in response to the dress story. And there's a little online test you can take. I do, in fact, have a fourth cone um so uh as a result apparently i saw the blue and brown dress as blue and brown now i'm not saying that this makes me special okay uh a little special maybe and i'm not saying that i can see uh the flaws in uh the trans-pacific partnership for example because I have a fourth cone, because I think anybody who's involved, especially after they listen to the conversation we're about to have with Dave Johnson, will be able to see the flaws in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So believe me, I don't think I'm special, but I'll tell you what, you don't need a fourth cone to read, and that is the report from the think tank Demos entitled Stacked Deck, How the Domination of Politics, How the Dominance of Politics by the Affluent and Business undermines uh, uh, economic interests in this country. Now, uh, among other things, Demos points out that a recent survey from the Russell Sage Foundation found that the policy preferences of the wealthy vary widely from those of the general public and yet are the policy preferences that tend to get enacted into law. Maybe we should think about that as we talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and we'll understand why it has a good chance of passing. Stick with us. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow and this is The Zero Hour.